They'll try and start this drive in the air. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And a pretty little juke. Second and three. Gets this to his running back. That's now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this first quarter. five here's second and five he'll look to throw caught on the right side by Jones and they're able to work this across midfield to the 48 to throw now on first down. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And they're going to get this down near the 35-yard line. Well, they clearly wanted to come out, Charles, and be aggressive throwing the football, and they've been pretty efficient along with that aggressiveness. He's now 4-4 four four on this opening drive. Yeah, and that's led to a fresh set of downs. I like what he's doing back there. You can tell he's at ease. Feels good about what he's doing. I think if I'm the play caller, I'm reading that. I'm continuing to let him throw the football. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. One back in the backfield, he'll get the carry. And not able to break away this time as they're going to stop him right around the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, second and 12. An awful lot of congestion in the middle third of the field, but how about our defensive tackle right there? He didn't just hold the line, he provided some push and smacked the ball carrier down for a loss. So the first down run lost a couple. Now they come up second and 12. And they'll keep leaning on the running game back to the ground. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive, and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play. Stopped after a very short gain. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback. It makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. On third down, he'll drop to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. The L.A. defense up the snuff in coverage there. Pushes this to fourth down. I think he could have scanned downfield forever, but there wasn't anything available. Ends up throwing an incompletion, and I think he'll take that. And now the Tampa Bay field goal unit comes out here. From the left hash, this will be a 52-yard attempt. And this one will not get there. It's off to the left anyway. It's no good, and this will remain a scoreless game. Now, if this was a clear day in September, I'd say this is well within his range. I'd feel very confident about this kick, but let's be honest about it. In these elements, the difficulty level gets ratcheted up by at least a factor of five. And the L.A. offense ready for this next possession. Good field position to start the drive after the missed field goal. Here's first down from the 42. Throwing to start the drive. Clark 
Over the middle, it's complete. And they're able to work this across midfield to the 48. Good job there to locate his tight end, Charles, in the middle of the field. Yeah, he has good pass-catching abilities, and if they're able to continue to find him here in the early going, I think it'll help out his teammates out on the perimeter. You can take the big shots later if he occupies their attention. Now here's a throw that's complete, and he'll be taken down, but not before they work this to the 45. On gain of three yards, that's good for Wales. First down, first and 10 at the 25-yard line. On first and 10. Clark, and he'll get it right back to Washington. And they're going to get this down to about the 37. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around the bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. Clark. Off the bootleg, rolling to his right, firing quickly here, and that's complete. And they're going to work this down to about the 32-yard line. But give the rookie another one on this opening drive and a first down with it. A nice start, Charles, for the first-year passer. He's come out, made a few plays, nice plays to begin this contest. He certainly has, and if he finishes off this drive with a touchdown pass, I vote we don't call him rookie anymore. We'll move him right to veteran and continue from there. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Back to throw again. Jones has it, and he'll be brought down at the 27. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. No score after one on EA Sports. The Rams with the football here to begin the second quarter as they are looking at a second and five situation. Down he goes at the 23, a pickup of four. Ready, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a game considering the points that they just had against them. This will be play number seven on the drive, third and a yard. They'll try to run for it with Smith. And he will have a first down at about the 21-yard line. I like his focus there because he wasn't thinking about breaking that one big. All he thought about was, I need one. Let's go get that. Ended up picking up two. First down. He finds his man complete. It's four. And he will reach the eight yard line before going out. A solid pickup of 13 sets him up first and goal. But well, they've certainly done a nice job spreading the ball around on this drive. This time he gets it out to his back. It's another nice play and another first down. They've got the defense on their heels a little bit. They're reacting instead of being aggressive and making plays. Here we go now on first and goal. Operating from the gun, Clark. Touchdown, Rams! From eight yards out, and the Rams post the first points of the ball game as they take the lead here in this second quarter. 
Those are the drives that prove a lot. You got a rookie quarterback, Charles, you're on the road, takes him down, throws the touchdown pass. And in a game like this, with as you described a rookie quarterback, the team usually says, okay, we got to take care of this guy. We got to protect him. But when he goes out and plays like this on the first drive on the road, he doesn't have to say, I'm here to be your leader. They just need to follow him. The point after through the raindrops up and good. And it's now a 7 0 game. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it winds up with a touchdown for Los Angeles. The Rams kickoff team on the field. And here we go with the ball in the air. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And not a good return here at all as they'll be forced to start at the 12-yard line. Tampa Bay, they're getting ready to set up shop here for their second drive. It hasn't gone particularly well for them. That's obvious. In these conditions, no points so far. They've got to get that offense on track. The question, how do they do it? It is the age-old question, isn't it? And to me, finding a way to make sure your playmakers touch the ball without it being too exotic. Meaning you don't have to go deep down the field. Maybe hit them on those short passes on the perimeter. Make sure you just turn around and hand it to your best runner and get out of the way. Don't cause any extra stress on your offense. And second and 10, he'll look to throw again. Oh, it's a screen pass, that's complete. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. And that doesn't have to gain big yardage to be an impactful play because if you get those pass rushers second-guessing themselves, then they might get hit with a screen. Maybe you can wind up slowing them down just a step, and if you do that, that's a win for that play. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. He'll buy some time right. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. Looked like a pretty smart decision that time to keep the football by the quarterback. It was because you saw how the runner got swarmed. So you've got to pull the ball from his arms, keep it yourself, and get what you can. And the most underrated player on this play is the running back. Because even if he doesn't have the ball, he has to act like he does in order to attract the defense. to throw now on first down. Man open here is Jones. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. They call it a gain of 19 and it moves the chains. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. First down's on the drive already as they'll go from the 47 now on first down. Now here's a handoff out of the gun. And he still has yet to get on track in this first half as they're going to stop him behind the line. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. I have a feeling they'll stay committed to running the football, especially on the early downs. They just haven't had a whole lot of success just yet. Two minutes on the clock, second quarter, 7-0 ball game. Second and 11. Fighting a safety valve here, that's complete. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. That might feel like a little bit of a lost opportunity there for the offense because the defense brought pressure that time. And sometimes against that, you can get out to your running back and it could turn into a big game downfield. But what a nice job they did getting to him quickly and holding him to a short game. They'll set up to throw. 
And this one complete to Reed. And he'll be brought down inside the 40-yard line. times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass trait in pregame warm-up, but I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. They'll look to throw here. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And he'll be hauled down at about the 30-yard line. A good yardage there on first down because sometimes all you need to do on the screen is get one key block. That might set your man free, and that was pretty good pursuit to the football defensively, or it could have gone for more. Creeping up on a minute to play in this first half. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. He finds his man complete. It's Parker. The Bucks going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a tick under a minute to go before half. It's showtime, baby. Let's be smart. Let's go. Again, he'll drop to throw. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And he is out of bounds. Looks like right at the 15. So the completion results there in nine yards. And they'll have a second and one forthcoming. They'll look to throw again. And that is caught, but the back judge right there to say incomplete. His back has been a dependable safety valve all game, so he went back to him when his first read was covered. Just unable to connect, so the play results in no game. They missed a field goal on their last drive. Here they need something to even get into field goal range on third down. Back to throw. That is caught inside the five. And he's down inside the five at the four before he's out of bounds. It's an 11-yard pickup. Thought they'd run it on third and one. Not the case. A chance now to get even before the break as they come up first and goal. He'll drop to throw. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. But there's an incompletion part of them, and the struggles through the air continue because so far their lack of passing production has led to a lack of points. Line of scrimmage, again the four-yard line. Second and goal. Looking to throw. And he's going to go down. Sacked back at the 13-yard line. Montez Sweat, the man that time to fight in and drop him. Second goal, last thing you need to do is get pushed backwards to take a sack. But he couldn't find anywhere to go with the football. Had to eat it and ended up on the ground. The Bucks forced to use their third and final timeout as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. This has been a long drive. You gotta figure a field goal would be a letdown. Can they convert now on third and goal? They're gonna look to throw. Being chased. Oh, the pressure too great, and he goes down once more. Call it a loss of eight there, and it's going to lead to a fourth down. Fourth and goal. So we've come to halftime. It's the visiting Rams taking the lead to the break. 
as we'll send you cross town to our studios here in Orlando and check in with the coach at our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome everyone to our brand new studios here in downtown Orlando in the EA Sports Halftime Report. First, though, a check of the next-gen stats in that first half for the Rams. And it was a tricky half to figure out numbers why. They've got the lead, but you'd figure they're definitely talking about ways to get this passing game back on track. Meanwhile, for the Bucks, they had a little more success than their counterparts did in the passing game, as evidenced by the numbers there. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. Forecast calling for more of the same. The rain set to continue as we are underway in the second half. And we will not see a return to start the half as this will be a touchback. So the Rams coming back onto the field, their second drive of the game. Their defense has pitched the shutout. Now they probably need to deliver a little breathing room, maybe make it a two-score game as they've got it first and ten. Second half begins with a run by Smith. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there. And that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play. It was only a three-yard run. But for both sides, they had to walk away from that feeling like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. Here's Clark looking to throw on second down. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. This defense is just flat getting after it. They have not given up much of anything in the run game. Case in point right there. Looking at a second and 11 now after the loss. Operating from the gun, Clark. He finds Smith out of the backfield. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage, it'll be back at the 36. A loss of one, now a loss of two, and they're staring at a third and 13. Well, Brandon, we could see that play develop, and they were hoping that he was going to be able to put a move on the first guy and turn it into a big play. But no such luck. The speed on defense continues to get better and better in the NFL. Pretty nice example there of those guys being able to run from their assignments and finish off that play. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Eluding the pressure. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. The defense rising to the challenge and setting him back on the sack. That's be exactly what they were looking for coming out to start the third quarter. Get a sack, get off the field, get the momentum going in their direction. Get the ball back to your offense, right? Get that momentum because, hey, this lead is very, very slim. Here comes the Rams punter now. And surprisingly, this is the first punt of the game for either team. That'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. 
Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. Now this game, it has obviously been all about the defense on both sides of the football. Which offense is going to break through here? We'll see if they can do it on this drive. Over the middle into traffic, and that's complete. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. The defense was ready for the back to leak out and even had a second player waiting to double him up. If you're going to commit to doubling a back, you better prevent a completion, but give him credit. Extra determination, extra effort, turn it into a successful play. Here's second and seven now from the 28. Now back to throw. And a throw right sideline is complete. Touchdown, Tampa Bay! A big play there. 72 yards. And the Bucs are within an extra point of tying up this ball game. Great corner route there. Not only able to catch it, turn it upfield, and get into the end zone. It usually involves a little bit of an extra move, doesn't it? You've got to get them thinking that you're moving to the middle of the field and you're breaking away to that corner. Boy, that was well executed. Now the try here for the point after. And in this rain, they were nice and cautious there on the extra point try, and that caution was well warranted, as this game is tied. separating these two teams on the scoreboard as the kicks away here. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And he will be brought down here inside the 20. Good coverage as he's dropped at the 17. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. We got a brand new ball game all even after that last touchdown. So every drive now becoming a little more critical here in the second half. Try to get the run game going. Here's Smith. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. You've got to be impressed by that defensive front on reps like those. They were not being moved off the line, kept their shoulders square, and gave their teammates time to fight to the ball and limit that game. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Off the play fake. Clark. Well, it's a shuffle pass, and it's complete. And he'll be marked down at the 26 with a gain of seven. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. On third down, Smith, and he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. They're able to convert with a gain of four. We all love to have a home run hitter in the backfield. Guy can take it the distance, but a short yardage trying to pick up first downs. That big guy, always oh, a nice luxury to have, isn't he? So first and 10 now from the 30. They'll run it again with Smith. And he'll scratch out only about a yard up to the 32. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. 
Now Clark to throw. To throw on second down. Finding room at midfield. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. A big play that time on the catch and run. And it'll result in a fresh set of downs. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Welcome back live to Orlando. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 43. Inside handoff, Smith. And a pretty good burst right there as he'll take this down to the 33. Another good game. That's now 35 yards combined on those last two plays. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. Now a play fake here on first down. Caught by Jones. And finally down he goes as they work it inside the 10 to the 7. A good pick up there, 26 yards. And partner in a tie game in the fourth quarter, you and I both know in the NFL, that's when you lean on your stars. And he came through with a nice catch right there. Field goal could get him the lead, but it might not be enough here as they come up on first and goal. Operating from the gun, Clark. Touchdown! A seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Rams answer back with a touchdown of their own to break our tie and take the lead here in the fourth. So, Charles, this game feels like it has been punch, counterpunch all throughout, and that touchdown breaks our tie here in the fourth quarter. You're making me want to get back in the gym and start training again. You're talking about those punches and counter punches. I also think this is where you and I start thinking to ourselves, who's going to make the play to change that, right? Who's going to get out of this little cycle that they're in right now and make a play and give their team a firm advantage? Point after, right down the middle. And that makes the score 14-7. to seven. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And he'll decide to not bring this one out as their drive will begin at the 25. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And now, after the touchdown a moment ago, they work from behind in a seven-point game in this fourth quarter. Plenty of time on the clock. And they'll begin by running the option. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. Yeah, that wasn't a big run, just a short one there. But guess what? Sometimes you treat it like boxing. You throw that jab out there, and you throw it again, and you throw it again. Then you come with a big punch later. Maybe they're just trying to set him up. Here's second and seven now from the 28. They'll look to throw. He finds his man complete. That's Reed. And give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling him almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. And they'll run the option on third and short yardage. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. And that one will go for 13 yards on the keeper. And a first down. Well, he is certainly dangerous when he spots a lane and he keeps it himself there and worked out well. And how about the moving parts?
offense on a play like this. You know you have to practice it over and over because it's almost like a ballet that has to be choreographed. But how about once he made the decision to go, he committed to it and went. Let's face it, most teams are going to defend the running back much more than the quarterback on that type of a play. On first down, he'll drop to throw. And he wisely will throw that one away. We've got to give out a little applause on that play. It has to go to the defense. More good work by them. They've taken away the passing lanes all game long, and you can see the frustration that it's causing because he just about threw that one into the first row. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. They'll set up a throw. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. It's been clear in this matchup which side has been the more physical one. It's been this defense. And here's another example on that last play. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. They'll drop to throw. And he comes back with one complete. And he's going to come up a few yards short. Brought down at the 45. So the completion results there in nine yards. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me. And I'm going to keep firing. And this will probably be the final play before the two-minute warning. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. Over the middle complete. That's Barker. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. We've got a one-score game with inside of two minutes remaining. So it's Buccaneer football as we welcome you back. They come up on a first and ten, desperately needing a score here on what could be their final drive. Now a pass dumped off to his running back. And they're going to get this down inside the 15. That completion helps out in a nice way. Now they can take a little bit more time, but guess what? They've got to make sure on their throws that they see it open, not just anticipate it. Clock running. The Bucs try to go quickly and get set. He'll look to throw. That is caught at the seven-yard line. And the Bucs are going to be set up with a first and goal coming up as they get him down at the six-yard line. A looming decision to make on the conversion down seven, but first things first, they need to score as they come up on first and goal. And he's got it. And he gets halfway there from the six to the three on a gain of three. It drives some people crazy to see those short throws underneath. They've got to find a way to gash the defense downfield. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. He's back to throw. And it's caught. It's a touchdown. So they rally here in the final minute. And they're an extra point away from tying this game. And while it appears the heavy lifting was accomplished by scoring the touchdown, they're still down one. That extra point is not a gimme. The 
this one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. Taking it about the one. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. The Rams offense now. They get set and head back onto the field. Well, partner, here it is. They've got the chance to win the game. You'd have to think they need to get it near the opposite 40 to have a chance to kick a game-winning field goal. We'll see what they can do. And you're right about that, because if we look at it in macro, that's what it looks like. But I think in micro, the head coach has already asked the special teams coach, what is he feeling? What does he think? Where does he want the football? What's the yard line we have to get? And he's already relayed that to his quarterback and his offense. They know what the goal is. Now the key, can they get there? So after the incompletion, second and 10 from the 22. And they go jet sweep with a former running back, Hurd. Oh, what a nice tackle there. That will hardly move the needle at all offensively. A very short game. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leads them to third and nine looming. Let's just make this one succinct. Nice job there. All the other guys on defense diagnosing the jet sweep and putting it down. Now it's Smith running right, and he'll be stopped here well short of the first down at the 24-yard line. And we have free football over time. Here we go, my friend. And the way this game played out, this is exactly how it should end. And here in overtime, if the team that receives the ball scores a touchdown, it's over. If they don't, we can still have some more football. That's exactly right. If they go down and kick a field goal, the other team gets a possession to either match it or score a touchdown to win the ball game. If both teams kick field goals, the next team to score wins. But if the receiving team throws a pick six or fumbles the ball and it gets picked up by the defense and they score, the game is over at that point. So it's the Rams who are going to get the football first as we are back underway here in overtime. This one fielded at the five. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And everyone knows the OT rules, Charles, but pretty simple formula. They go down and get a field goal, we continue play, but if they can find the end zone on this possession, ball game over. And as meticulously as all teams plan for a game, I don't doubt for a second on that offense coordinator's play sheet. He's got some overtime plays that he wants to run. I know it sounds crazy, but they plan for everything. First and ten all the way throughout the game, second and seven, whatever. Right now, he's looking at that play sheet saying, if we get to overtime, what can we break out that they haven't seen? Now Clark looking to throw on second down. Oh, the Buccaneer pressure too much. Down he goes. They push him back. He runs that time on second down. Whatever this guy is, he's calling the signals for him. But even the best in the game, they can struggle against a good, cohesive zone coverage. Can't find a gap in the secondary quick enough, and he ends up taking a sack. with an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. Back to throw. Clark dancing to his left. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. A solid run of 11 there as he tucked it and ran, but he's still short of the marker at its fourth. That looked great when he first took off because in my mind, there was room to run and he had the marker in his sight. But I certainly didn't expect him to close so quickly, and neither did he. They got to him just in time, and now that forced him to make a decision with his fourth down call. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. Well, their defense did the job, got off the field without giving up any points, and now, Charles, all they need here is a field goal, and they get the victory. 
Yeah, and this is the way I love overtime. I'm one of those really, really old school guys that like sudden death right from the beginning. Well, we've got it now because any points wins the game. On defense, get a safety, a pick six, fumble return. You can win it as well. So I'm really looking forward to this series and see how both sides play it. Up at the 29 now, they'll head to the line, second and a yard. From the gun, he'll hand this off, and they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. Two yards on the pickup, and that's all they needed to move the sticks. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs, and we'll still get the first down. They love being physical. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Right back to him on first down. And he's corralled at the 40, but not before picking up eight. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. Eight yards the gain on that last run. Here's second and a couple. Hands it off out of the gun. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook. Go play action. Toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation... Go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down. Keep the sticks moving. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Well, they've been back on their heels a little bit here in this drive, but a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down. Now they have to gear up, try and get two more stops, and escape this drive. So second down, still 10 yards to go. Ball on the 43. He'll look to throw. Oh, and that'll be incomplete. Oh, he took a shot as he let that go. And it's going to bring up a third down. It's always tough trying to keep your guy upright when he's trying to throw the football. When you're dealing with those big, bad guys on the defensive front, it's even tougher. And this time, those guys on the opposite side won the battle, getting to the quarterback and knocking him into an incompletion. On third down, he'll drop to throw. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Barker. And he's able to get this to the 40-yard line before he's out of bounds. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. Charles, you get into these overtime situations, that's not a bad guy to dial into. Well, when you have to have plays, especially in a spot as you just described, we're an OT, you've got to go to the guys you can trust and you know are going to make the plays. Well, they say, it's not the X's and the O's, it's the Jimmy's and the Joe's. So from Rams territory now, it's first and 10, right at the 40. On play action, they'll throw. He finds his man, complete. It's Reed. And they're going to be set up down around the 15-yard line. A really nice gain of 25 yards. A lot of efficiency here on this drive. Heck, this may be their best drive of the game. Yeah, if they'd moved it like this throughout the entire game, we probably wouldn't be here in overtime. But right now, what you just said was the key word, efficiency. Taking care of the ball, move it downfield, get themselves in a position to score, and win this game. And he is out of bounds, getting it down to the 10. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch, and it's second down. Well, right now, every little bit of yardage helps. So they're, they're obviously well within his range. It's just about keeping the football and getting in the right spot. Know your kicker. Get, as you mentioned, get it to the right spot, the place that he wants to kick it from. And if you do decide to throw the football, it either goes to your team or no one. It's the only kind of throw you make. And the Buccaneers are going to be set up with a first and goal on a pass play that moves them all the way down to the one. Now a timeout called for by the offense. 
They'll be down to just one remaining as we step aside here in overtime. to throw again and they're going to get to him a sack sack back at the nine yard line it'll go as a loss of eight and a tough result there on first and goal well surprise surprise first and goal at the one no quarterback sneak no running play they decide to throw for it but the pressure got to him quickly and put the quarterback down now from the nine, here's second and goal. And they'll run on the inside handoff. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. Seven big yards on the carry there to get him within range of the goal line with third down upcoming. All right, well, they didn't kick it on second down, now third and goal. You have to kick it here. Absolutely have to kick it because if you get a bad snap, you fall on it, you got a chance to kick it again on fourth down. Let's say it gets blocked and it's behind the line of scrimmage, you fall on it, you get another chance at it. Give yourself that option. Give yourself that opening. Big play coming here. It's third and goal. He'll look to throw. And he'll just get rid of it. So it's been a long drive. They've held the ball for quite a while. Now what do you do here? Well, to me, at this stage, after this drive, this close to the goal line, three points would be a letdown. I'm going for it here. On fourth down, it's Collins. And this doesn't end well at all as they stop him far behind the line to gain. They stop him on fourth and goal at the three. And this Rams defense comes up with a goal line stand. Set to begin their next drive, the Rams offense at the line. They're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Looking to throw. Clark, he finds his man complete. It's Ford. And now the timeout comes in with just one second left in overtime. Come to the line here, needing nine yards to pick up the first. Clark on third down. Now he'll let it go deep right side. And unable to connect, incomplete. Now give them credit, they took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. One overtime, how about two? We need another. We're still even. We'll switch sides and have that second overtime in just a moment. Here comes the Rams punter now. And in double overtime, this needs to be a good one. On oh, the return is Reed. A pretty good punt there, but also a nice return of 12 yards. And they will take over first and 10. The Buccaneers in good field position here to start out first and 10 at their own 44. A throw left side to start out. That's complete. And they'll get him down on the other side of midfield. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless.
A run of the Jets sweep with Jones. He'll be taken down at the 48 for a pickup of two yards. And defensively, they had that one pretty well figured out. Yeah, and one of the things about this play, it can be even more effective when you run a lot of motion and there's plenty of times you don't hand it off. So third down, and defensively, the Rams have added two extra DBs. And they'll try and run the option to pick it up. And he has the first down yardage before they bring him down right at the 45. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. So that was all you're looking for on a play like that. Get the first down and keep the drive moving. Yeah, it just looked to me like he just said to himself, I've got this. I'll take it. I'll pick it up and let's keep moving. Get the first down, get a new set, and let's start over. On first down, they'll go to the ground attack. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Good yardage there on first down, exactly what you want. Get yourself set up to keep making first downs, keep the clock running. And if they're smart, you're starting to milk the clock. No hurry before you run your second down play. Eight yards the tally on that first down run. Here's second and two. And they'll give him another shot here on the ground. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. From the gun, they'll try to run it. And he's going to get to the 31, enough for the first down. Give him the third down conversion, five yards on the play. Brandon, what were they thinking on defense there? That looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. Just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you ought to have a few men in the box there. On first down, they'll go to the ground attack. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. Overtime with two minutes to play. We are in sudden death, but still all tied up. One back in the backfield, he'll get the carry. And he stopped right at the 25 after a gain of five. And I know you, with every carry, especially in overtime, you're just saying, if you're that ball carrier, hold on to the football. Hold on to it, protect it, but not necessarily settle it, because you're trying to get to the end zone. You're trying to end the game right here. And I know the defensive guys poking, clawing, raking, trying to knock the ball free and protect their end zone. Yeah, like you alluded to, especially this part of the field. And he will have a first down at about the 21-yard line. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. A third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. And now it all rests on the right foot of their kicker. This to win it in overtime. And he got it. The kick is good. And they have won it here in double overtime. 